We should prepare while we can, then make a preemptive strike against the enemy. So you hid it way out here? Not an easy place to discover, that's for sure. Well, let's go check to see if it's safe. Traveler, wait. <sighs> We've no time to lose. Let's head inside. What is the situation? Mechanisms here have changed over time. You can access the upper floor through the side door. Perhaps you should try reactivating the mechanism over there.
Make sure all the runes are pointing in the direction indicated by the light. That should unlock the mechanism. open. Let's go. Our destination is just up ahead. any further. Be on your guard. I sense the presence of the Abyss. As I suspected. The false memories were a trap. The Abyss Order just wanted to follow us here. Now that they're in the vicinity, we should have a chance- Dane? What's wrong? Can you feel that? There's been a disturbance in the ley lines. Wow, you must be really sensitive to that sort of thing. Byman doesn't feel it. You too. Do as I say. Use that mechanism over there and leave this place. The Abyss Order is putting something in motion. If you return to Vimara Village, I suspect you might finally have the opportunity to locate the missing villager. Just think of it as a way to divide and conquer.
I knew going along with your trap would be the only way to meet with you face to face. You risked your safety and that of the Eye? That's quite the gamble, Dainsliff. But I believe that I am the one walking into a trap laid by the Twilight Sword. So you came here all on your own? What about those followers of yours? When the Twilight Sword is prepared for battle, any army I could send would only be marching to their doom. Better that I face you alone. I know you must have a lot to say. But if it's a conversation you want, you'll have to defeat me first. sun. At last, they no longer needed to dwell on their suffering. Such was the price they paid, and thus their souls became cleansed and pure. Uh, did you hear that? What was that sound just now? It sounded so gentle. Could that voice be comforting the hilly trills in some- Oh, this is weird. Let's check if this is happening anywhere else. Looks like the same thing is happening over here, too. You see, we're both still here. We've reclaimed an endless amount of time to release your tears. You no longer need to hold back your sorrow. Over there, it looks like they're sleeping. In the end, he whispered, Sleep well, father. Sleep well, my beloved people. When you awake, that which differentiates us shall... It almost sounds like a poem or some kind of story. Well, now that the hilly trolls have calmed down, Vimara Village should be safe at least. Let's put this situation to the side for now. Dane said this might be our chance to find the myth. The Abyss Order? This is... Uh, thank you for your concern, but as far as I... Well, that's good to... Oh, also, you didn't happen to come across any clues about the... Hmm? Someone's gone missing? Huh? Well, you know, the young guy from Vimara Village. The one you've been looking for all this... That's kind of the whole reason we're here... Ah, I do apologize, you two. I hope I'm not worrying you too much. I'm sure, at least right now, I can't seem to recall whatever it is you're... Re Wait, how is that? Uh... Something's definitely not right. We just talked to Grandpa Amadea about the miss. What do you think, Traveler? Could everyone's memories of the missing villager have been erased again? You're right. 
we should narrow down the... Someone's gone missing? Uh, just as expected. Um, that guy you said a bunch of nice things about her? He's around 20 years old. Oh, I know who you're talking Really? You remember? There aren't many young people who've earned that kind of praise from me. Then there's only one person who fits the bill. No doubt about it. But why'd you say he's gone? Yeah, I just saw him leave the village. Strange. Bayram seems to remember him. And apparently he just... Do you think maybe it's not that there's something wrong? If this person only exists in people's memories, maybe we're in someone's memory right now. Disturbances? We're in someone else's memory. Just like how you entered your sibling's memory last time. That would also explain why we seem to be at a time before he went missing. It's a memory after all. Right. If he's someone who only exists in people... But didn't Baron just say that he saw him leave the... Who knows how long this ley line disturbance is gonna last. Good idea. That'll help... We pretty much figured out that the missing villager has the ability to... Right! That! Can we try to figure out more? Like, does it maybe leave a trace that would somehow give up? If time was allowed to pass within the false memories, there's a higher ch- No wonder! All this time and the sky hasn't changed a bit! That must mean that's the tell of the fake memories. The implanted memories are basically taking place. If the memories included the regular passage of time, like there could be overlap or something, people might start to wonder why they remember doing two different things at the same time. That's why he makes sure the memories take place at a specific moment in... color of the sky. Oh, right! That's exactly what a toasted... Oh, come to think of it. Every time we talked, it always seemed to be around dusk. Time always passed by really slowly. Even when it felt like we'd been talking for hours. Yep, that has to be it! This is definitely a Tosa's map. Yeah, that's... So, you see, Granny Jahiet was a mercenary when she was younger. She just talks like that out of habit. Oh, there I go again. Always talking about my own things. Um, it's okay if you don't. You... you could also... Oh, I... Uh, I, I think you're an incredibly strong and thoughtful young woman. You'll meet many amazing people and live a very happy life. You won't miss someone like me. Huh? Are those your friends over there? Oh, right! This version of Atosa hasn't met us- Friends? I guess you could say that. It must have taken them a lot of effort to find me. So... I should see what they need. I'm sorry, Atosa. Another time, huh? Um...
It's nice to see you, Traveler. I believe this is the first time we've met. Born into abject sorrow, he shall now become the loom of fate. Dane's brother, one of the five sinners of Conria, the founder of the Abyss Order, the man who broke... Your... Kari Bear Alberic. Oh. You know me? That's quite the surprise. I don't... Oh, I see. It was the memory, wasn't it? Your sibling's memory. This is Atosa's memory. I came here to say goodbye to her, but I suppose I'll just leave her a message instead. Come, let's find somewhere else to talk. I suppose you could call it the realm of my consciousness. I'm someone who no longer exists in the real world after all. As you well know. Uh, it's nothing. I still have enough strength to play the part of a good host. I've always hoped that I'd get the chance to talk to you like this, and now... Extreme sorrow and pain. Hope and regret coursing through your veins. And a degree of abyssal power that defies comprehension. Father told me that once I possessed all those elements, I would become the loom of fate. But, despite his intentions for me, I never truly became the loom of fate. I was merely used as a means for its construction. In truth, I died the moment I set everything in motion. The person you see before you now is nothing but a remnant of consciousness left over within the loom of fate. As for your question, the loom of fate is a device capable of weaving ley lines. In its primitive form, it can only be used to create and implant memories. But, as more of it is completed, its power becomes stronger and stronger, until finally, it has the power to weave real ley lines of its own. Once fully completed, the moment it gains the power to weave ley lines, it loses the lower level ability to influence memories. But it also becomes a tool that can change the entire world. Yes, I have the ability to control the loom in its semi-completed form. I suppose you can think of it as a form of compensation. After all, its existence cost me my life. Ah, that. I was wrong to implant those memories. 
I'm sorry I caused so much trouble. Not only for everyone in the village, but for you as well. I just... wanted them to feel like I once existed in this world. As if... I had a chance at life. <laughs> I know what you must be thinking. Why would I do something so meaningless? <sighs> but I just... I just couldn't accept it. I had to know what it would be like if I had my own life. What kind of person I would be. What other people would think of me. Chief Amadea. Baram. Granny Jahiat. Atosa. What would it be like if I could live alongside them? No cataclysm, no curse. Just a quiet life in a peaceful village. I was curious, so I... selfishly... tried to have my own life. Even if... Even if that meant piecing together the version of myself that could have been... one memory at a time. I know it sounds stupid. <laughs> After all... my life ended a long time ago. Any chance at living was stripped away from me when I was eight years old. Even the form you see before you was nothing but an invention based on my father's appearance. An imagined version of what I would look like if I had the chance to... I know. But there's nothing I can do to make them find... If I could exist in the real world... I would return without a second thought, and surprise them with the suddenness of it all. Ugh. I know. Captain Dainsliff? Twilight Sword, you mean? Ah, uh, no need to meet up with him. Things should already be settled on his end. Exactly. As someone who could only exist in people's memories, the fact that I'm able to talk to you in my consciousness like this the loom of fate has already been completed. No need to worry about Captain Dainsleff. He's absolutely fine. The only reason he lost the eye was because I happened to guess exactly what he was planning. Captain Dainsliff has had the eye inside his body this whole time, hasn't he? His plan was to lure the Abyss Order to a false location, capitalizing on their pursuit of the eye. He would then hand the eye to you and tell you to take it away from that location. That way, Captain Dainsliff could accomplish his own goal and ensure the safety of the eye all at once. That's right, because in his mind, Before you two entered that false location. Traveler, wait. Hmm? Uh, we've no time to lose. Let's head inside. That was when I implanted the memory of him handing you the eye. Given the tense situation at that time, Captain Dainsliff failed to notice anything out of the ordinary. I'm sorry, Traveler, but I needed the Loom of Fate to be completed. And to... I promise I'm not trying to conceal anything from you, but I truly have no idea what the Princess is planning. Tavat's ley line system is deeply entrenched in the planet. Creating new ley lines can neither replace nor extend the ones that already exist in the face of everything they could be planning. I fear I'm too insignificant in any case. I had my own use for the Loom of Fate. You remember my father, don't you? Clotar Alberic. I believe you saw him in your sibling's memory. After he used the power of the Abyss to restore consciousness to my Hilly Churl form, 
I suffered from an indescribable level of mental anguish. To comfort me, my father told me a story that this was a fairy tale world where I had to take on the form of a little monster. That story managed to dispel my fears, even if just for a moment. My goal was simple, to use the loom of fate in its near-completed form to implant a specific memory into the minds of the hill. In that memory, I would tell them a story, just like my father did for me. I can't change the world. Not when I lost the very right to exist within it. Implanting those memories, that was the most worthwhile thing I could offer. All that's left of my existence is a wisp of residual consciousness tied to the loom of fate. In truth, that trace of my consciousness should have dissipated long ago. But now, the bedtime story is finished. And it's finally time to rest. Looks like I was too late to see Kari Bear one last time. Consciousness is gone, and this space will soon disappear along with it. Neither of us belongs here. That's why we're not tangible. <sighs> Were that not the case, I'd love to hug you too. Well, how about a conversation? chance to just stop and talk like this is certainly not easy to come by. When that battle earlier was tough. The one against Dane, I mean. I didn't expect that after everything, he would still hesitate to raise his sword against me. Were it not for that, perhaps I'd still be no match for the Twilight Sword. Even the Loom of Fate, huh? I still haven't found a way to utilize it to its full potential. But there's still time. Before the heavenly principles awaken. Yes, for 500 years now, ever since the cataclysm in Conria, there's been no sign of activity. Not long ago, you witnessed the Hydro Archon destroy her divine throne. Yes, such a flagrant disregard for the rules, and still Celestia took no action. I suppose that's proof enough of the Heavenly Principle's situation. However, the Heavenly Principles will awaken. We just don't know when that will be, or what might trigger it. You could say that. 
Just look at Kari Bear. He was so pure and single-minded. The space we now find ourselves is a perfect representation of who he was. Quiet and peaceful. Even as a hilly churl, seeing the terrible sight within the mirror wasn't enough to taint his spirit. He brought comfort to the people of this world, even though he was denied the very right to be a part of it. So ask yourself this. Who was it that deprived him of that right to exist? Of course, that's only one example. My feelings about the Heavenly Principles are too complicated to explain in just a few words. <sighs> Ether? You're the only one in this world who calls me that. There's so much I wanted to ask you, but for some reason, I'm not interested in asking those questions right now. There's just one thing I have to ask. One thing I could never understand. Why? Why can't we continue our journey together? Hmm. At the end of my journey, I arrived at a place known as the Sea of Flowers at the end. Do you remember? A long time ago, when we traveled between worlds together. You told me you wanted to find a place in the universe where that one flower was in full bloom. To have a place like that suddenly appear before me. Well, would you think of that as a coincidence? You mean... I miss you too, Ether. But as this war continues to rage, and as I continue to seek that final answer, I don't even know how to face myself sometimes, let alone my own brother. <sighs> huh? What's going on? This space has lost its tether. I doubt it'll be able to exist much longer. In fact, Aside from our inability to physically interact with each other, there's something else you should know about this space. With Kari, everything in this space will be wiped from existence, including all memory of our reunion. You're only telling me this now? that we've been trying to find, right? And after that... Uh, Paimon doesn't remember what happened. <laughs> Wait, really? What a school... Well, what happened after that? Ah, 
there you are. <laughs> Sleep well? Bayram, you sure seem happy. Did something good happen? Something good? Huh. It's just that, well, the village organized another search party yesterday. It, so there we were, searching away, when some, according to him, one day around dusk he was passing by this one tree. There he was, sleeping under that tree all by himself. His parents came a little later to wake, and after that, well, we all started to feel like that really is what happened. Kind of... Oh, and we also remembered his name. Curry Bear. Now, that's not a name you hear every day. Would have been helpful if we remembered it sooner. Well, I hope he's happy wherever he is. And we're all relieved now. Seems like everyone thinks Curry Bear left the village. That's probably for the best. At least they have some sort of explanation now. wonders how Atos is doing. Maybe we should go check on her. If she... I didn't see her in the village just now, so... You two. I was part of the search party, so I... Honestly, I just... Can't believe I forgot something so important. It's funny, but... I guess it doesn't really matter anyway. Life is made up of a... I'm just happy I got to meet him. So... Okay, I'll admit. I'm just putting on a brave. I was dumped. Wasn't otherwise. Why would he just leave like that without. S <laughs> you don't need to come for. It's just like Kari Bear said. It's the things we overcome that. And you know, if he has a heart, me. Anyway, thanks for all your hard work, you two. Well, that should be it, right? Oh, right. Weren't you about to tell Paimon what. Uh, a picture? What?
Osmanthus wine tastes the same as... Where do you want to go next? If you'd like to see Liu Wei's tourist spots, I have a few references. Boats are made for transferring commodities back and forth, and those that come across Liyue tend to stay a while, so it is where many things come to settle. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember, but where are those who share the memory? Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? Turns out. 
Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory?
There's no end to this. Shine down! Ready to reap! Dog, break forth! Done. Quite another test of
Better than nothing. Add Astra. Thank you for coming. Add Astra.
Upgrade. can appreciate its true qualities. Familiar to you, Granny, one day? Let me see. How strange. Have I lived? When we were at Wangshu Inn and the abandoned house earlier, though I couldn't remember everything, I still felt a sense of familiarity. I could, but here, I don't have that feeling. Perhaps I did come here in the past, but it just didn't leave. But did the stories get it wrong then? Yeah, that's true. But Paimon was hoping this place would jog Granny Uendai's. I'm sorry to disappoint you too. It's all right. We're not going to give up yet. We'll figure something else out. Just you wait. Thank you. If only I could. Huh? That way. What's that mountain? Oh, let Paimon look! Huh? Isn't that Mount Outsong? Looks like we've come full circle! Mount Outsong... Mount Outsong... Granny, are you okay? Don't push yourself, Granny! It's okay if you can't rem- Mount Outsong, I... My Mount Outsong holds some familiarity to you? It does, but I... I can't... Are you feeling unwell? My head... It feels all... Cloud... Miss Xianyun, is there anything you can do? Let us go to Mount Outsong. But... Fret not, all will be well. You and I, you have all... You may leave the rest to me. I've prepared something that can aid you in suppressing the fear in your heart. Wait, really? When did you do- <laughs> I never leave anything to chance. All- <laughs> This is it. Huh? But isn't this the mechanism 
Why you precisely a recent one at that? I am most pleased with the it periodically releases a soft breeze, which when paired with a gentle adeptal tune can help soothing agitation and anxiety, relieving exhaustion and insomnia. Oh, what a cool game! We could have come to Mount Atsong right up. How preposterous! Had you and I not recalled much, we Adepti can only help those who first resolve to help themselves. Had she lacked such determination, Paimon thinks she- As previously mentioned, a gentle adeptal tune is required to take full advantage of the mechanism. One secured such a tune from Streetward Rambler. Oh, Paimon can feel what you mean! P and you, you and I, it- <sighs> <sighs> It appears she has already succumbed to the depth. The drought is over. But why do you look like you want to cry? The potion. It's nearly run its course. I've never regretted meeting you. Not even for a second. Please. Please, no. Have you forgotten? This is the world you left behind. One of gentle breeze and morning dew. Perfect, this is your home. This is where you belong. You should have never left. The you of the... So that is the truth. No wonder this place is so- Granny! Granny? I- Cloud Retainer. Hmm. Your memories have returned- Wait! Did you just call her by her full name? You already knew each other? Yes. I now remember ev- Granny, please don't cry. Oh, don't worry, my dear child. I'm so sorry, everyone. You've gone to... It's all come back to me now. The most important thing that I had forgotten. <sighs> One can sense the guilt that now plagues your conscience. Reclaiming a truth long buried... No, it's okay. Now that I assure you, everyone, I cannot thank you and... Please, Granny, don't force yourself. What happened to... I know, dear child. My feel some time ago, I made a terrible- Is this the sin that you mentioned in Dwayun Kart? I am, in truth, not a human being. My real form, one that I held for centuries, I spent many, many years living on Mount Outsong, bathing in the soft breeze and drinking the sweet dew of the mountains. At some point, though she never took me on as a formal disciple, I always saw her as my master. Whenever she took out her tools to work on Mecha, I even contemplated completing my training and becoming an adeptus in my own right. I followed her teachings. Fifty years ago? That's right. Master regaled me with many stories of her past deeds. She was the one I looked up to the most. More than anything, I dreamt of becoming an adeptus like her. I wanted to travel, but I was still far from being a real Adeptus. I possessed no ability to take on human form and fit in with the crowd. Once she learned of my desires, she warned me that the potion's effects would only last ten years, and if I were to fail to return to my original form at the end of that time, I would forever forget my past as a crane. Oh no. So that was... The source of your dementia all along. Was it because of Grant? Indeed. I fell in love. Though he was human, he had spent his entire life training on Mount Tianhang. When we met, it was although clumsy and impulsive as he was, you'd think he was the real strange bird among the two of us. But still, just like me, he cared deep. I could not help but fall for him. But my time continued to tick away. Those- Oh no. 
What? I committed an offense. I wanted to stay with him, even if it meant living a life full of pain and suffering. Even if it meant that I would eventually turn into a monstrosity. I knew I had betrayed Master's hopes. But I was too ashamed to face her. So I wrote her a long letter instead and asked someone to... I was convinced that she would not support my decision, and I lacked the courage to speak to her face to face. In my shame, I fled, and but that was only the beginning of my troubles. I began to suffer from a strange illness. My memories became hazy and confused, and I could no longer, along with my memories as a crane, I soon forgot the true cause of my suffering as well. I knew only that, I looking back, I was beyond lucky to have come across that traveling merchant at Wangshu Inn. It was such a fortune. Oh. Granny, what's coincidence? Why did I ever think it was a coincidence? Tea pills concoct, Master. Don't tell me. <sighs> Human custom would dictate the conferral of gifts to be in order when one's progeny is wedded, would it not? So when I tried to conceal my name and one still remembers when you were but a fledgling, you possessed a certain fondness for one found you with such ease every time. Wait, wait, wait! Paimon's confused. So, Cloud Retainer, you found you and that. <sighs> Perhaps. One was furious upon receiving your letter. Seized with anger, one set out to bring you to your senses. truth, one had more than a few misgivings about your chosen partner. As an exorcist, his talent was lacking. One could hardly say his- But soon, one came to appreciate the devotion he bestowed upon you during your illness. He never uttered a complaint, unwilling to begrudge someone of such character. One decided to- Wishing to grant you a life without regrets. One gathered many divine ingredients and used one's own blood to create a form of medicine. Though one asked for how to deliver the medicine, after much contemplation, one eventually decided... One took great care to alter one's features and select the appropriate attire. Only after meticulous scrutiny did one finally set out for Wang Shu Inn. As one expected, you were most ignorant of one's true identity. <sighs> one was quite torn. Should one have celebrated the success of one's... Nevertheless, one would speak to you about another matter, if you are amenable, even considering your loss of memory. One was simply flabbergasted that you could so easily forget the consequences of consuming medicine infused with adeptal blood. 
proclivity to attract monsters is hardly that complicated of a concept to remember. To think that you tried to travel while weak from sickness and heavy with child. Had one not intervened to clear the fog, all of you would have been lost during the night. monsters would hardly have pursued you with such ferocity without sufficient incentive. They were likely incited by... <sighs> Sad godly remains, in turn, were likely drawn to... Juan was, after all, an active participant in the Archon War. Some of the gods were likely shattered by contraptions of one's very making. In the end, one was relieved to see you endure through the night. At the break of dawn, one heard an infant's cry pierce through the air, and one saw you carefully cradle the child to your chest, to see you happy. You should have a complete understanding of the events. Wait, but if that's true, then the crane who took care of me when I was sick must also be. Ah, one had almost neglected to recount the absurdities of that tale. Just as you and I troubled one with her antics, upon finding you burning with fever, one made plans to bring you back to one's abode for treatment. However, upon seeing one's form, you began to cry. When one asked you why, <laughs> apparently you believed that one could not possibly be a true adeptus, because all one had no choice but to apply powder to one's body to conceal the variegated nature of one's appearance. You became more than amenable enough when one stood before you devoid of any other coloring. It bears mentioning, however, that as a crane, Yuan Dai was nearly entirely pure white in color. Though you had never encountered her in that form, perhaps fate brought you two together. Now all has been revealed. <sighs> One owes you an apology, you and I. One recognized you upon your very end. One has always viewed you as a disciple of equal standing with Ganyu and Shenhe. Indeed, 
One wish to bring your story to a satisfactory end with this visit to Liyue Harbor. Still, one could not reveal your identity right away. Had one simply informed you of all you had lost, memories are most meaningful when recalled by those who lived through them. Would you not agree? Master, I... I must ask. If you found me all those years ago, why did you leave me be- One has never regarded your action as a mistake. It was a simple choice. When it is time for one's progeny to leave the nest, it is the responsibility of an elder to let them fly free. Yet, when your wings grow weary and the night grows dark, tis a refuge referred to by many a name in mortal writing. Home, nest, hate. Hmm. One speaks, of course, of a place not unlike one's own abode. Thank you. I just... Hmm. Yuanda. One expects you too have sensed the... Forty years ago, you chose a path without a future. Though one used one's own blood to provide... <sighs> Even the power of an Adeptus has its limits. Had your condition continued... Fortunately, you were able to avoid that scenario by reclaiming your memories. Though what... So... One will help her reclaim her original form as a wild crane. If it... She's gotta go back to being a regular crane, huh? Master, you've already... I don't know how I could possibly repay your kindness. This is a better result than I... <sighs> hmm. Not long. The transformation is imminent. Hey, Granny, please don't leave, okay? Don't be sad, dear child. Granny has led a wonderful life. Don't forget to eat well, okay? A growing young lady like yourself needs lots of good food to grow big and strong. I promise, Granny. Good girl. Good girl. Don't worry. It's not goodbye forever. Granny's I won't stop until I can turn into a human without having to rely on anything but... That's a good girl. Even though we won't see each other for a little while, as long as we both work hard. Uh, I'll eat well, Granny. I promise. And I'll live for you. That's a good girl. I'm so sorry, Master. Let her be. At her age, tears are a necessary part of maturation. Now that the issue has been resolved, you should also take a moment to relax. Give yourself some time to rest. Take a nap if you must. One will wake you in due time.
hoped we would see each other again. That our days of separation would finally end. And all my troubles would be behind me. Shouldn't your dreams be pleasant? It was a good dream. It's just... You weren't ready to wake up. as one may be. Words of comfort are not one's strong suit. You are doing all you can. One can see your strength of will, your fearlessness in the face of danger. And so, whatever your dream may be, one believes that you shall achieve it. Of course, whenever the perils you face overwhelm you, or you become weary, one is always here for you. After all, as an elder, it is only right to look out for the young ones. Chicken drumsticks, that's all. M Madam... Oh, Shuyu, you, you're awake! How do you feel? I... I feel... a little better. Thank Madam Adeptus, could I, uh, ask you something? Would you... take me in as a disciple? Oh. And have you reasons for this sudden interest? I know Granny thought what she did back then was wrong. She felt really bad about it. Even though Granny lost her memories, she never forgot to show me how much she lo- I could become a cool adeptus like you, and help a whole bunch of people, just- Upon some reflection, one supposes you are no mere mortal. The fact that you undies blood flows through your veins is proof enough of that. If this is what you desire, one shall make it so. Thank you so much, Madam Adeptus! No, uh, I mean... Master. I- Shuyu, are you sure about this? Paimon's gonna let you in on a little secret. We've seen Cloud Retainer's two other disciples, and they pretty much eat nothing but bitter... If you join them, you'll never enjoy one Min restaurant's delicious cooking ever again! <sighs> How utterly preposterous. One has never enforced such a... Every individual must find their own path to enlightenment. So long as one retains a... Well, you say that, but Paimon's not seeing any tasty treats up here now, is she? Although Mount Outsong is rich in natural beauty, its location does... Pre that is precisely why one plans to relocate to Liyue Harbor. Shu Yu shall have the honor of becoming one's first disciple in the human world. Whoa! You're leaving Mount Outsong? 
one has never concerned oneself with the location of one's residence. From the very beginning, yet in the end, all of one's disciples ended up in Liyue Harbor. Gan Yu, Shen He, Yuan Dai. They all chose a life among the mortal world. One has reflected on this fact for many years now. One can only assume that it is due to some failing on one's... One is most curious as to what aspect of Liyue Harbor could have enticed them to remain... Why are you all so su... Paimon is... Uh, just a bit shocked, that's all. So, does this mean we can... Hmm. One has precious little time to squander. However... If one finds oneself other, one will be assuming the identity of a human while residing in Liyue Harbor. You should take care to avoid disclosing one's true identity. Don't worry, we'll help you keep it a secret. So, uh, when can we expect to start seeing you? Perhaps in two days' time. One has some matters to see to before one's departure. Preparation is the key to success, after all. One plans to put up very- One has already picked out a handsome property near Chuhu Rock. Tis no small purchase, but what is mortal life if not one expense after another? Seems like you've really thought of it. Then how about we meet up in Liyue Harbor in two days? A sensible plan. See you then. Oh, also, why don't you take this suspense insomnia mechanism as a souvenir? Anytime you should feel ill at ease in the future, you may try- Awesome! Thanks, Cloud Retainer! Hey, didn't we promise Xingqiu that we'd tell him what we found out? Should we make a trip to the Feiyun Commerce Guild? It's totally up to you! Your concerns are excessive and unfounded. This is but a simple collection of ordinary valuables. So uh, to be quite honest, in what way are any of these ordinary? Every single item here could be worth more than everything I own combined. I simply can't risk shelling out that kind of mora without proper scrutiny. If I'm wrong, I would never be able to earn it back, not even if I worked every single day for the rest of my life. I have to be careful. Yes, you could. Can... We're here, Clow! Uh, Miss Shenyan, what are you guys arguing? Ah, perfect timing. This ignoramus is questioning the authenticity of my... I'll have you know, these items have remained untouched in my personal... Several... ton... Uh, indeed. Ahem. <clears throat> Their family heirloom... Yep, yep, they've definitely... Hear that? Had I not found myself in need of Mora, I would scarcely have had the heart to part with them. Indeed, you should cons- huh. Doubt their authenticity any further, and I may just decide- Whoa, 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 whoa! Please don't go! I apologize for any insult, miss. You see, I know full well that I- An expert, you say? <sighs> Very well. I will wait for a little while longer, then. Traveler? Master! Oh, it's you two again. Shoo you! You got a new outfit! It mm-hmm. Master made it for me. I like it, too. Huh? You know how to make clothes? <laughs> Do I know how to make clothes? With the support of the proper- Master, I brought in most of my stuff. There's a few boxes left, but they're kind of heavy, so- Fret not. I shall help you move them into your room. Uh, actually, I, I should probably uh, sort through my stuff a bit first. Everything is kind of messy right now. <laughs> it appears my young apprentice has her own- 
Now, this expert you mentioned. Soon, soon. Here, allow me to make some introductions. This is Mr. Zhang Li, a well-respected consultant at Wang Shang Funeral Parlor and an expert in... Mr. Zhang Li, this is Miss Shen Yun. She's the one who's looking to sell the collection of valuables I mentioned earlier. Uh. Huh. Ah, if it isn't Miss Shenyun. <clears throat> In indeed, most serendip- Quite well, thank you. I was fortunate enough over the past few days to enjoy both a stroll in the mountains and a fresh brew of tea from the most- Huh. Uh, so you- t Indeed. How fortunate we are that fate has brought us together again. If you are otherwise unaware, allow me to inform you that Miss Shenyun is a well regard. <laughs> you are too kind, Mr. Zhongli. True collectors pride themselves on their wealth of knowledge and eye for detail. Why, you flatter me, Miss Shen. <laughs> Not at all. Um, while I am loath to butt in, you two already knew each other, and you seem to have quite a cordial relationship. Can I be certain? <laughs> A preposterous accusation. The heavens themselves would collapse before- Miss Shenyun speaks the truth. Contracts are built on honesty and trust. Say no more. Let us depart. Uh, I jest, I jest. What fool would still harbor doubts after Mr. Zhongli himself? Hmm. <clears throat> I deeply apologize for doubting you. So, um, Mr. Jean- There is no cause for concern. They are indeed rare and precious valuables. Take this mechanism, for instance. Though one may not immediately perceive its purpose, the same can be said for this one here. 
Few could hope to possess an item that's so per- I am sure you have heard from your travels that the study of mechanisms is among the most wondrous arts in this world. With that in mind, I earn- All right! Since I hired you as- Then, in that case, Miss Shenyun, I'll take the lot. However, since the final sum is quite- The Northland Bank? Huh. Oh, you refer to the fiduciary house. Oh, very well. <laughs> I fear people only use the term bank nowadays. In that case, I'll be off for now. <sighs> Shang Li! My friends, have you been doing well? We've been great! How about you? Paimon didn't know you were such a busy con- My days have been quite pleasant as well. I had been quietly enjoying a cup of tea with- as for you, Miss Shenyun... I must say, the name Sh Whatever for. Am I not addressing you as- Well, that is tr <sighs> Alas, refer to me however you will. <laughs> it would seem that you have gained many valuable insights- One has indeed. One's previous stays were all brief. Now that one has made up one's mind to move and settle, one has gained a much better appreciation of the hubbub and commode. This city is much changed from how it was more than a thousand years ago. Not unlike the ocean tides, so too shall the movement of people ebb and flow. From turmoil to peace, enlightenment to aspiration. Human society possesses limitless potential. In an All right, that's enough reflection for one day. You make a valid point, Paimon. Now that the sale has concluded, what say one plays the hook? Hmm. Perhaps you have forgotten, Cloud Retainer, but I once tried my hand at that dish. You were at the table on that occasion, so logic dictates that you should have already... Oh? What occasion was... It was a reunion between friends several centuries ago. Alas, you must have been too preoccupied to secure yourself a portion. Or... Ha! Huh. Hardly. Twas most certainly out of consideration for the others in attendance. In but a moment, one will show you what it means to have a true def- It is settled then. Bamboo shoot soup, mora meat, crab roe tofu, triple layered consomme. We shall enjoy the lot. One has already passed word to Shen Hun Gan Yu to make a reservation. It is prime time for them to meet one's newest disciple. <laughs> it should be a most- Shu Yu, come now, it is time to dine. Ah, this gentleman over here is Mr. Zhang Li. A humble employee of Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. Nice to meet you too, Mr. Zhang Li. That should be everyone, right? Sounds good. Actually, Master, have you ever tried Adeptus' Temptation? I heard it's impossible to stop eating after even just one bite. Hmm, that sounds rather implausible. Although with the right preparations... Huh? 